What's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of this FCS Dynasty here on NCAA 06, and we got some great action for you guys today. Got eight games on tap, an update to the top 25 pools, as well as some Player of the Week updates. As we'll go ahead and jump right into this first one. Two teams that aren't technically fcs teams in real life but they are in the top five both of these teams are actually and they both are actually uh considered the game of the week so should be a pretty good game can't wait to see how this turns out and if you're in general excited for this episode man make sure you smash that like button and hit subscribe as we almost had a fumble and north texas actually recovers that thing they start the drive at the 37 yard line as hill who was highlighted in today's game uh you know first turnover of the year man he comes in three touchdowns no interceptions but already two fumbles neither of which you know are going to be at least like scooping scores at the very least but not a good start at all for this mid tennessee state offense already find themselves down three to nothing as the mean green of North Texas are driving downfield. Going to get it out to the running back. Who's able to get to the outside and get into the end zone. Touchdown, North Texas. And the mean green right away will take a 10 to nothing lead. As Hill will drop back the throw over on the right hand side. But that's intercepted. Three turnovers over the course of... Of the first quarter. No, first half. It's the first half, but I mean, they were just starting the second quarter. Just really, just not a good start for the Blue Raiders here. And Lee Corso and company, you know, they did actually choose Mid Tennessee State to win this game. And right now, that might be a little bit of a curse for Lee Corso. As the Blue Raiders down 17 to nothing. They need a spark somewhere. And they are certainly going to get it from their special teams unit. Going downfield. And it's going to be a 90-yard return for a touchdown. And that is how the Blue Raiders get themselves on the board. They get rid of that goose egg. But still down by 10. Will that really slow start? Really cost the Blue Raiders. We'll just have to wait and see as the Mean Green do end up getting yet another touchdown on the board. It's now 24 to 7 as both teams now trade field goals. It's now a 20 point game, but this running back trying to make it a two possession game and he's going to be gone like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Blue Raiders. A 68 yard touchdown. That will help this Mid-Tennessee State squad make it back to a two-possession game. But the Mean Grain, give them credit, man. They do a really great job of capitalizing off the really strong start that they had at the beginning of the game. They are going to win this. But to make the scoreboard look a little bit better, they will get one last touchdown. They will actually go for two here. And... That's something that's kind of nice about NCAA 06. You see the coach pointing his fingers for two. That's a kind of a nice little feature. But Mean Green, they do end up winning big in this one. They win 40 to 25. Big statement win. We'll see if this is enough to move them up to number one in college football in this FCS universe. And really that difference in the game was that those turnovers in the beginning of the game that was the biggest difference north texas was able to capitalize they make it a 17 to nothing start and you know from there i mean it's hard to recover you know in a game like that so hey give north texas credit they end up winning the game it was so great about this episode we have four top 25 matchups on tap for you guys here today so even though the rest of these games are obviously not the games of the week. We got some great matchups around college football this week. And I think you guys are going to be excited for it. So make sure you got to stick around, man. Also helps the brother out with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. So we'll go ahead and check out the second matchup of the day. 
uh, between number 13 ranked Raging Cajuns and the number four ranked Eastern Michigan Eagles as the starting quarterback for Eastern Michigan was highlighted, but he actually gets hurt very early in the first quarter. So this backup quarterback actually has to come in and we'll see what he's made of, man. He's at home, you know, but he's taking on the number 13 team in the country. Got to keep those national championship hopes alive as that is a beautiful throw down the left-hand side. Wow, that is just a fantastic throw. Backup quarterback is, you know, really showing that, hey, man, he can step up and make some big plays too when called upon, but Raging Cajuns will also get on the board as well. Beautiful throw down the left-hand side as well. One-on-one -on -one coverage, drops it right into the bucket and it is just a one possession game once again as backup quarterback does end up throwing an interception mark crumpler does get his second interception of the seasons thus far as looks like that ball was just simply thrown behind him so raging cages now they do have a chance to take the lead before going to halftime as he's Gonna throw this thing downfield. Double coverage. It's fumbled though. But the Raging Cages recover. Yo, that's crazy, man. Look at this. Just a chain of event, man. Just rolling to his right. Throws off his body. Catches it in double coverage. It's fumbled into the end zone. But the Raging Cages recover. And for the time being, they take a three point lead. But. The Eastern Michigan Eagles, they are going to quickly respond here as well. Get the cannons firing. And now the Eagles are back on top, 21-17. to As this could be some trouble here, though. Interception down the sideline. Is it going to be a foot race one? Yes, it is. Pick six for Davian Crowder as he takes the interception and goes coast to coast. As they were trying to connect on that curl route. But that just is not going to work out unfortunately. So a 31-17 lead in favor of the Eagles now. Biggest lead of the day so far since the first quarter. But Cajun strike back. Single coverage throws it up in the air. And comes down with the catch. Beautiful job. You know just high pointing that football. And now back to a one possession game. 31-24. Running back, going back to work. Able to skid it out to the outside. Got some space to work. Gets past the safeties, and it's another touchdown. For the Eagles of Eastern Michigan, now a 38-24 game. Now in desperate need of trying to get back into this one. And, oh boy, it's not looking good. Threw an interception on a fourth down. Just trying to make something happen. One of the receivers also gets hurt as well so that was the best chance for them to go ahead and win this game they are not going to but like uh like what mid tennessee state did in one of the, their last plays of the game uh they will also literally last play of the game they will score a touchdown to make the score a little bit better but it still doesn't change the fact that it is a very convincing victory for the eastern michigan eagles who will win this one by a final score of 41 to 31 and it just goes to show man getting some fantastic matchups across the board as ul lafayette they did a fantastic they actually had more yards of total offense but this could not run the football that uh really was the difference those seven sacks that they allowed as well not to mention they did also end up losing the turnover battle as eastern michigan will look to go ahead and challenge for that number one spot but one of the two teams that entered the top 25 this past week is alabama state they come in ranked number 24 in the country they're one and oh but their top 25 ranking a little bit in question here as if y'all remember from the player of the week uh thing from last episode they barely beat denver 14 to 13 so We'll see how legit Alabama State actually is as they take on a really talented New Mexico State squad who comes in ranked number 17 in the country. Alabama State needs their quarterback to step up in order to win as we'll go ahead and get things underway here as we see an interception thrown early. Now that will really help this Alabama State squad 
as they will prevent the Aggies of New Mexico State from getting some points on the board early. Just overthrew that football. But unfortunately, could not really do anything with it. So New Mexico State will come back at it once again with the White Vans. As Kirby Williams and company takes over at about the 47-yard line. Gets a great throw over to the left-hand side. As he will connect with his receiver. Just a crossbody throw that turned out really well. As on the 31-yard line, Kirby Williams fires another ball over the left-hand side. And it's a touchdown for New Mexico State. As they will go ahead and take a 7-0 lead. Is now... Brian Ryan tries to respond here. We'll see if he can do it. Ryan looking to his left, but it's intercepted. Oh, no. The first interception of the season thrown by Brian Ryan. You absolutely hate to see it. Trying to get his running back out of the backfield, but the linebacker cuts it off. And the, and the Aggies will take over again, this time on the 37. Williams rolls to his right. But then he throws an interception too. The Aggies losing the turnover battle early as as the second interception by this defense read the eyes of the quarterback and reacted based off those reactions. Unfortunately, the Hornets cannot capitalize and it will still remain a 7-0 game with Kerry Williams driving into the red zone inside the one. He's feeling himself, but hands it off to the fullback. A little bit of fullback you action, something that not the expert would surely be proud of. And it's a 14-0 game. So down two possessions. It's intercepted again. And it's just been that kind of day. Brian Ryan now with two interceptions. As it will take a field goal from that drive. 17-0. Still... Not even out of the first quarter yet. And it's been a brutal day. Putting the football away. It's going to lead to another touchdown for the Aggies. As that man is going to be gone. Like a girl in a country song. As it's down 24 to nothing here. Midway through the second quarter. As Kerry Williams has time. Finds his receiver downfield. And it's going to be a huge first down. Sean Bullock's. Already with four catches here, not even at the half. As Williams, he's actually a little bit mobile too. He's actually going to scoot and he's going to score. So, Kerry Williams with a passing touchdown. And he's also going to get a rushing touchdown as well. So, two touchdowns on the day for the impact player at quarterback. As Brian Ryan's just absolutely just being overwhelmed. The offensive line not doing any favors as Carlos Bass. It would get in there, get his second sack of the day. Also make sure that New Mexico State gets set up in really good field position off the fumble recovery. And we're not even out this first half, man. 38 to nothing now. As they'll go ahead and kick this ball away. Hopefully something good for the Hornets here as they're going to take it from the end zone. But that's fumbled. Oh, no. Anything that could go wrong is absolutely going wrong right now and they go turn around and it ends up being yet another touchdown off the turnover 45 to nothing and you you would hope that the Hornets can get something going you know they haven't really been able to get a stop all day long but it doesn't happen another interception Brian Ryan just having an awful day. That's his third interception that he's thrown here in the first half. So really now a chance here to see the Aggies get a 50 burger before going into the locker room. And it's looking really close now. They get into the red zone. They're free for free in terms of scoring chances when they get into the red zone. And they will make it four for four. As we will indeed see the Aggies not only get a 50 burger in the first half, but they put up 100 points. 100 on Alabama State. You hate to see it. So here's the hoping that this next matchup here is a little bit more 
competitive, I would say. That was definitely a really rough one to witness. As we'll go ahead and check out this non-conference matchup between Southern Illinois, the Salukis, and the Tennessee State Tigers, who are 1-0 on the season. And we'll see what ends up going down here as Tennessee State. They do have a pretty nice quarterback in Matt Berry. Threw for 250 yards, two touchdowns in their previous matchup. And he's going to be big if they want to end up winning this game. But here's the thing. Matt Berry actually also ends up getting hurt here in the first quarter. So Dan Marshall, he's the backup, has to come in and play the rest of this game. So that'll be a really interesting the dynamic to see if that helps this Southern Illinois squad get the dub at the end of the day but it's still pretty competitive after one quarter still a seven nothing game but a beautiful throw down the middle of the field and then marshall man he is feeling himself right now three consecutive completions since coming into the game but we'll see if they can finish the drive though third and goal as marshall will try to run for the end zone but he fumbles the ball and southern illinois is going to recover that's tough that was setting up to be in the position where they would potentially at least get a field goal out of it would have been a two possession game but instead still seven to nothing and make that seven to seven as shortly after we get a 90 plus yard touchdown pass and it's now all knotted up at seven apiece here as we'll see if Dan Marshall can do a little bit of a better job of taking care of the football here. As now, first and goal from the seven. They haven't scored in the red zone last time they were down here. We'll see if they can change that as it's a play action. Marshall rolling to his right, finds his tight end in the end zone. And it's another touchdown for the Tigers. Second touchdown pass of the day for Dan Marshall as they will have a seven point lead a chance here as well to possibly add some more points here before we go into the halftime locker room david marshall looking to lead another great drive is marshall looking over the left hand side but it's intercepted and it's one man left to beat he is going all the way touchdown so lukies and instead all knotted up at 14 and after a Tennessee State punt, they have a chance to take the lead, and they do. So a little bit of an upset alert here as Southern Illinois looking to take a seven-point lead into the halftime locker room. One last chance to try to launch this thing deep before we do officially go into halftime. And it will end up being an interception again for David Marshall. David Marshall's been making some plays, but he's also been making plenty of mistakes early as you're truly, they're truly trying their best to help this uh, Saluki squad get their first win of the season. As now, midway through the third quarter, David with a nice throw across his body that does end up tying this thing up at 21 apiece. And then very next possession, Matt Parker gets an interception it's his first interception of the season and the Salukis man that that's a tough one he was going for his running back and the running back was open he just simply overthrew him so now a chance for David Marshall to potentially help his team take the lead but why do that when you got a star running back in the backfield thought he was going to get caught from behind but that track speed simply too much to handle a 62 yard touchdown run now giving the tigers a 28 to 21 lead here is now they're lo so Luki's looking for a response as well they get across the 40 yard line that's brett sampson with a great carry as sampson now in the backfield blocking he's gonna find his tight end and the tight end does manage to get across the 35-yard line. Beautiful throw over the middle of the field. As the Salukis are trying to put together another drive. 12, looking over the middle. He's going to find Brett Sampson, but he fumbles the ball. And now they turn it over. Huge turnover as we're here in the fourth quarter. 
a chance to tie this game and they can't do it so now a chance to potentially turn this game away but brock lawrence gets absolutely lit up like a christmas tree how about that hit so the tigers can't put him away and now here comes brett sampson with a chance to help his team out he's trying to make up for that fumble on the previous possession is now fourth and two they need this first down in order to keep the game going tennessee tech could put him away but we got a man in open field and it's brett sampson with a huge play as it sets up an opportunity to tie the game late and sure enough they do brett sampson finds the end zone with four seconds left to play in the ball game and for the very first time in this series we are going to witness a overtime game regulation simply not enough as we'll skip over to triple overtime nothing happened in the first couple of overtimes aside some field goals but hang on now third overtime southern illinois starts with the football and we have a fumble again who is that that was that the full was that the running back that fumble that might have been brett sampson oh you absolutely have to feel for him right now man that's absolutely tough so tennessee state they set up for a field goal they get it to within 25 yards and this game right here is officially going to be over this was a game that the channel members selected and they did not disappoint with this week's selection tennessee state winning a triple overtime thriller against southern illinois despite using their backup quarterback in this game final score ends up being 37 to 34 the best game yet in this series absolutely no doubt so we'll see how the rest of these games respond to what we just witnessed you know we'll see if they the rest of these matchups here in this episode can live up to what we just witnessed as we now go in to the next game of week number three we have the buffoon cookman wildcats we saw them last week they lost to northern iowa they will be taking on morgan states who is playing in their first game and this team is led by one of the custom coaches in this series dion kirby who is coaching in his very first game at the fcs level as we go ahead and get things underway and wow that ball was caught off the deflection wow you absolutely love to see it so what could have been an interception ends up going the other way for a 66 yard touchdown now morgan state did end up missing the extra point so and they're gonna miss the extra point like after this as well so morgan state they do take a two possession lead still but it's only 12 to nothing you know not really been impressed morgan state gonna definitely need a new kicker uh as soon as possible you know and i'm also really interested to see how this game ends up turning out in general just because these two teams are absolutely different and look at this this man absolutely shanks the kick that wasn't even remotely close you absolutely hate to see it so the leads remains 12 to nothing and we'll see if buffoon cookman can get something going outside of their running game as we do end up seeing a pass completed for the wildcats sooner than say the last drive of the game that was their big problem last week they could not uh get any completions matter of fact we actually see a passing touchdown let's go man you love to see it buffoon cookman does get on the board now they do also miss the extra points so to really bring down what's going on so we see uh two extra points miss we've seen a field goal miss from morgan state and then we also seen an extra point missed from the wildcats of buffoon cookman so over three on extra points and we also see a missed field goal could uh play into a role if this game is close late you know it's just something to think about here as we will see this quarterback throw downfield he's gonna find his running back 
as BJ Allen, not only is he completing passes, he's completed three passes in a row. Like, what? who is this quarterback? He's, he's looking completely different than what we saw last week against Northern Iowa. It's amazing to see. But we'll see if he can pick up this third down here, folks. We got a third and nine as Allen will drop back the pass. He's got max protection and finds his receiver who fights his way through two separate people to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Extra point, of course, is missed. And it's all knotted up at 12 apiece. Still 0 for 4 on extra points. But the Wildcats take their first lead of the season. 73-yard touchdown pass. And with another extra point miss, it's an 18-12 game. Can Morgan State respond? They cannot. And it seems like ever since they jumped to that 12-0 lead, they have really really started to fall apart a little bit now Bethune Cookman with 18 unanswered points since that 12-0 run by Morgan State as we see a little bit of misdirection and somebody missing a tackle and that missed tackle is going to cost dearly as my man is going to celebrate down the sideline and it becomes the biggest lead of the day 25 to 12 an extra point actually made by the way in a 13 point lead Make that a 20-point lead after this punt return for a touchdown. As the Wildcats have quickly opened things up here in the second and third quarters. Should make this a 20-point lead, and they do. And now this is where the Wildcats are the most dangerous when they are able to run their option playbook the way that they designed to in that third and fourth quarter because they can really start taking the air out of the football and force this other team to really sit back and you know make uncharacteristic mistakes and that's exactly what happened to Morgan State in this one three separate turnovers there and could very well get worse except the Wildcats do not do anything with the interception they actually have to go ahead and punt this thing away as they do get it to number two. He's dangerous. He's got space to work on the sideline. And no one is going to catch them. And that is how the Bears are going to get themselves back into this game. They're going to need a lot more than that. But it does end up cutting this lead down to 20 points. Meanwhile, BJ Allen dropping back the pass. They actually set up a screen in the screenplay. Works to perfection as 85 takes it down the sideline for a 30-yard touchdown and a 45-19 to 19 lead as getting into the last few minutes of this game. Still, you know, not giving up without a fight. Dion Kirby trying to preach to his guys to make sure to never give up as a backup quarterback in the game, Jacob Johnson. Who does get a nice throw down the right hand side but he does end up getting sacked on fourth down so the wildcats take over less than three minutes left to go and really just a dangerous situation here as now we're seeing them taking some of the air off the football assuming this is not in for a touchdown that's not the case but going to be in the red zone though as we're getting down to the last minute 20 here. And that time, the reverse was actually contained. They just didn't make the play on the football. They could not make the tackle. And that was the difference, man. Bethune Cookman does end up winning big, hitting that 50 burger. So we had four top 25 matchups this week. And this is the last of those said top 25 matchups. We have number 21, Idaho, going on the road to play against... Number 7, UNLV, who, yes, they do have the higher ranking, but this is a team that, you know, a little bit more banged up. You know, they got a guy injured, and they do also have a guy suspended for this game. Whereas Idaho is coming in completely at full strength, so it's going to be up to Carlos Hall here to really make sure this team stays on track. Through for 182 yards, two touchdowns. Dude is pretty legit. As we jump into the first quarter of action, Idaho with a 3 0 lead early as we see jailbreak all across the offensive line, causing a fumble. 
And now UNLV with a chance to get on the board, getting it to the tailback, and the tailback finds the end zone. Touchdown, Rebels. And a 7-3 lead as Idaho tries to respond with a touchdown their own. As we'll see how they do with second and five from the 30. They set up a screen as well. Good spacing. Breaks the tackle as well. And now it's a foot race. And this is a foot race. This is a guy with four free speed. And he is gone. Touchdown. Vandals of Idaho. And now the number 21 team in the nation. Now leading a top 10 team on the road. Up 10 to 7. As now. Throwing over the middle, that's intercepted. And UNLV responds, getting that big play that they need as well. So a back and forth affair here as things are still all knotted up at 10 apiece after one quarter of play. But that could be changing though as we see a beautiful strike in the back of the end zone. Touchdown UNLV. And so a 17 to 10 lead here as we got a pretty good close game here as idaho instantly ends up responding and now all knotted up 17 apiece beautiful throw in response to it this game is really starting to turn into a track beat man and i know some of y'all in here love track meets man and if you made it this far into the video you are certainly not being disappointed just really getting ourselves a great set of games here as idaho down 24 to 17 trying to go over the top but it's tipped away and ends up being intercepted and idaho turns the ball over again their third turnover of this game so a chance here really to see carlos hall get one more touchdown before the end of the half but it ends up getting intercepted instead and a huge one too, Anthony Brown, the middle linebacker of this Vandal defense. Make sure that this game remains a one-score game. Although UNLV does end up, they do start with the football to begin this second half. And we'll see what Carl's Hall can do to try to make sure that this team gets a two-possession lead. How about this running back though? Making some things move and it's going to be a touchdown. Oh my goodness, 75-yard touchdown pass. But that was all on the running back right there, man. Two-score game. And UNLV really starting to go ahead here and really establish themselves in this game. They want to be the dominant squad. They aren't just simply trying to win this football game. Oh no, they are trying to come out here and send a message. And they are certainly sending that message right now 45 to 20 being the lead as of right now so the vandals in deep trouble here down by 25 going into the final quarter of play nice job moving in the pocket so at least the game becomes a little bit more interesting but gonna need a lot more than that to come back and win this game you got to get some stops on defense and that just doesn't happen today we just we don't see the, the stops idaho its defense just gets ran off the field and that's gonna wrap things up here man 25 52 to 27 being the final score ulv should become a top five team we'll have to see what the top 25 poll does end up showing at the end of this episode as well as if idaho remains in the top 25 i think they should even though they did end up losing pretty big they did go on the road and play against a top 10 team i mean that has to be considered but we'll have to see what the pollsters have to say uh whenever uh that does end up coming out at the end of this episode but hey man you know what it is we still got a couple of more games left to play here uh between this and uh as well as seeing uh a couple of custom coaches here towards the end speaking of custom coaches western carolina comes out they play their very first game of the season they take on the number 23 team in college football florida international home of the golden panthers so the catamounts here they got their work cut out for them and definitely a tough matchup 
So Coach Owen Benfield, he's the custom coach that will is responsible for leading this uh, Western Carolina football program. Got a tough matchup ahead of him, honestly. I mean, gonna have to really put together an A-plus game plan if they want to come out here and win this game, man, because Florida International, they are no slouches. And speaking of which, Western Carolina originally had this running back contained in the backfield, but then the dude flips direction and no one was there to cover that backside. So it ends up being a 70-yard touchdown run, but... Western Carolina, they aren't going to go down without a fight. They actually get a really good throw as well down the sideline. And, hey, we might have ourselves a little bit of a game here as the emotions of this home crowd taking over. Beautiful one-on-one, -on -one, able to high point the ball better than that defensive back. And it's now all knotted up at seven apiece. So, hey, mate, we, uh, you know, people thought this could have potentially been a uh you know been a blowout but you know we might have a little bit of a closer game after all we'll just have to wait and see what happens here although for our international they will recapture the lead another touchdown is going to make it 14 to 7 here late into this first quarter as now the catamounts trying to respond but oh no you throw an interception and not only do you throw an interception you also give up a pick six as well. So a little bit of a double whammy in terms of the big mo. In terms of momentum. As on the very next possession. A second interception is thrown. And while it's not going to end up like a pick six on the previous play. Uh, you still start off with really great field position that you give to the defense. Not to mention you're starting to see players get... A little bit banged up Tyler Campbell. He's on this uh, Catamount defense. He sprains his elbow. So he's going to be out not only for this week, but for potentially the next couple of weeks as well. So that could be really a pretty big loss for this defense as well. And everything just falling apart for the Catamounts in the debut of Coach Benfield. Man, this is a tough really tough pill to swallow is now 35 35 to 7 is the score and we're hardly out of the first quarter we're still in the second quarter and it's still just really turning into an absolute slaughter fest here you know florida international the golden panthers just doing everything that they want to do right now beautiful throw in the back of the end zone by the way that's going to lead to yet another touchdown and Again, still not in halftime yet, but it does end up being a 40-burger for the Golden Panthers. And at this point, you're less worried about winning the football game. You're just trying to get something positive to go away. You know, just try to chip away at it. But this quarterback just doesn't understand this. Justin Ross is going to pick this quarterback. His first interception of the day somehow does not lead to any points, though. Is now going to try to throw over in the middle. Gets it to his wide receiver. And Terry Bell finally completes a pass. But now first and 10 from the 50-yard line. Chance here to maybe uh, capitalize on some additional points. Scrambling, trying to get away from the defense. But he loses the football in the process. And another, yes, yet another 50-burger. It's going to make it 49-7 to here as Florida International, they run away with it. They called the dogs off after the first half. They do lose by 46. So we got one more game left to play, and it is the Utah State versus South Dakota State game. Uh, South Dakota State led by Justin Faith, one of the co custom coaches in this series. But before we jump into it, let's go ahead and take a peek around the rest of the NCAA just to see what things are happening. For example, we got Florida Atlantic winning huge against Prairie Valley A&M, winning by a score of 55 to 14 to help retain that number 15 ranking that they currently have in the top 25. Speaking of blowouts, Weber State went on the road to play against St. Thomas. St. Thomas playing one of their first games at the FCS, a historic transition from Division Three to FCS and they weren't treated very well losing by 31 points in that game 
Central Michigan also blowing out Indiana State. Indiana State now being blown out in two consecutive weeks to start their season. And as the blowouts keep coming in, Ball State blowing out Illinois State, winning 49-16 in that matchup as well. Speaking of blowouts, we have Michigan State taking on Alabama A&M. And Alabama A&M, they were not ready for the Spartans. They lose 49-3 in this game. Alabama A&M falling to 0-2. Arkansas State, on the other hand, they are going to lose a close one to Penn State, nearly pulling off the upset, but just cannot quite get it done. Western Kentucky also almost pulling an upset as well. They just narrowly lose to Akron, losing 23-21, to despite a 10-point rally in the fourth quarter by the Hilltoppers. As we continue to look around the rest of the NCAA, Harvard went to go play against Tulsa, and Harvard lost big, losing 48-17. to Harvard now 0-2 on the season so far. As for Eastern Kentucky, they take on their in-state opponent, the Kentucky Wildcats, at the FBS level. And definitely a talent gap. Kentucky winning big 49-3 against the Eastern Kentucky Colonials. As for Temple, Temple came in number 14 in the country. They won big against Idaho State back in week number one. They defeat Youngstown State in another blowout. They win 55-6, doing so on the road. Georgia Southern also taking on Southern Utah across state or cross country uh, non-conference matchup. Georgia Southern winning 34 to nothing. Utah Southern Utah not able to get any points on the board. Meanwhile, San Diego State coming in number two in the country. They beat Southern Missouri State 29 to three. The Bears now 0-2 after his loss in conference play. As for Troy, though, watch out for William and Mary 17. A 14 win for the tribe i hope that william and mary does end up getting into the top 25 they definitely earn it they took a 10 free lead into the half and just hung on that defense making a difference speaking of making some differences ul monroe gets their first win of the season beating the university of missouri in kansas city the ruse losing 48 to 14 in that one and speaking of big wins, the Buffalo Bulls now 2-0 as they will hold on to their number 20 ranking, shutting out the Penn Quakers, winning 55 to nothing in an impressive performance for them. As for SMU, they take on the South Dakota, I believe that's the Coyotes there, uh, South Dakota getting their first loss of the season, losing 48-10 against SMU. Western Michigan had a really great game against Western Illinois, but Western Michigan will remain in the top 25. They win 37 to 34 against the Leverbacks of Western Illinois, who fall to 0-2. As for Montana State, they lose big against FBS opponent Cal, losing 44 to 10, as Montana State falls to 0-2 on the season. Kent State taking on Minnesota, and Kent State actually pulling off the upset. They beat the Golden Gophers 20 to 14, as Kent State will now improve to 2-0 on the season. As for Hofstra, they will not be so lucky taking on an SEC opponent in Mississippi State. They lose 63-10 in this one, a tough pill to swallow, as will the University of Northern Il Iowa. They lose big against Illinois as well. As for Florida A&M, they will also fall to 0-2 after losing to Tennessee 56-3. Princeton also falling to 0-2 as well. They played against Florida State in the ACC Conference, and Florida State won 49-7 in that regard. Rice also improving to 2-0 as well, or no, 1-0. This was their first game of the season, taking on North Dakota. And it was a closer game, though. 28-13 was the result. Now, the final game that I wanted to sit back and cover for you guys here today is... The coaching, or at least a TV coaching debut for Coach Justin Faith, who is in charge of leading the South Dakota State Jackrabbit squad, taking on a, a team in, within their conference, uh, at least the, the newer conference that they're in, in Utah State. Now, South Dakota State, they did end up winning in the previous game. They won an overtime victory against Eastern Washington, but they got to go up against William Callahan here. He's one of the better running backs in college football. So definitely are going to have their hands full here. It's going to have to be 
a full, uh, full, uh, all hands on ship kind of thing. But we didn't see that here today. We're not, we did not see that here at all, really. As right off the gate, Utah State gets a 72 yard touchdown. That was actually their very first play of the game. And you're going to see that a lot here. A, a lot of, uh, short drives uh for both good and bad reasons as you know south dakota state they're uh having a hard time filling up their stadium here and you can see why man this team uh getting dominated early already 14 to nothing here as utah state's able to take that back for a 55 yard touchdown off of the punt return is now second and 10 here we'll see if South Dakota State can get something going. They tried to run the option, and it ends horribly, man. A fumble that sets them up deep in Jackrabbit territory. And Callahan taking full advantage. He's going to run this thing into the end zone. Touchdown, Utah State. And it's now a 21 to nothing lead. Oh, boy. This might be a long day. Especially if they can't stop this running game. And that's... They're, they're really struggling out here, man. You know, they, they just don't have the athletes yet. Uh, compared to, you know, some of these other schools like a Utah State. Utah State, not even ranked, by the way. Already down 28 to nothing. And you saw that stadium pulse bar as well. Like, they, they are out here. And, you know, it is so quiet in this stadium right now. You could literally... You could hear a squirrel fart uh, if you really uh, listened in very carefully. You could hear a squirrel. You could hear a mouse fart. Uh, that's how quiet it is in the stadium. It reminds me of my uh, my days at Bluffton University. You know, uh, low end division three. Uh, no offense to you guys, y'all is always my home. But it reminds me of that kind of football atmosphere, man. It's just uh, but when the team dominated like this, you know, I don't blame them. As we see yet another touchdown there. It ends up making it 49 to nothing and you don't think it could get like any worse but oh boy it does third and 12 see the quarterback trying to do too much there throws it up into triple coverage by the way this might be returned all the way back and it actually is and yeah you, you hate to see it so we take a look around the ncaa one last time as we see the espn cover for week four as it shows you know that north texas game uh, that we saw at the beginning of the episode winning 40 to 25 that was that final score if y'all uh, remember from that but you'll definitely have some changes in the top 25 since we did see some top 25 schools fall most notably we did end up seeing troy losing and they were ranked number six in the entire country mid tennessee state though they also fall quite a bit they fall eight spots down to number 13 despite north texas uh being the uh the now the new number one team in america as of right now but troy with the biggest drop of the week they fall to number 18 after a 14 to 17 loss to william and mary and speaking of that disrespect, man, William Mary still not in the top 25, although there is two new teams here. Ohio, after their 24-17 win over Dartmouth, they get in at number 23. And then James Madison, who actually was on by the previous week, they only played one game against Florida A&M. They won that game. As Alabama State did fall out of the top 25, but they are still receiving votes and listen man william and mary they are not even receiving votes the disrespect for william and mary man they got some things to prove now for players of the week we did have uh two players of the week uh bethlehem cookman did have the offensive player of the week we saw that in the morgan state matchup 17 carries 204 yards almost 300 yards of total offense for micah skinner as the senior running back helps the wildcats get their first win of the season and speaking of wildcats Weaver State had the Defensive Player of the Week in Stafford Stoffel, a senior redshirt linebacker, ends up with 13 tackles, a TFL, an interception, and two forced fumbles. This man was all around the field. But that is going to wrap things up here for week three of the inaugural season of 
this FCS Dynasty. If you did end up enjoying it, make sure you go ahead, you smash that like button. Hit subscribe as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. And with that, this is John J Gaming on the mic signing off. Hoping you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.